So these are T1 mid images. I will start from the skull base and you please keep looking. Okay. I will I will give you a little more extra time uh, for the areas with pertinent positive findings. So initially, uh, first of all, I showed you the T1 weighted images, and now this is a uh, post contrast T1 weighted weighted images with fat suppression, right? Mm -hmm. So you are following the images? Yes. I will stop here. Just, just consider that you are sitting on a reporting session and you are reporting this case. So this is the corner sequence of the same case. And don't worry with this scroll and uh, back and forth uh, split of images because next of the cases are uh, as per our PowerPoint presentation, this was a very interesting case, so I just wanted to share with everyone. So now we'll come the can, can I start? Yeah, yeah, yeah please. please. I provided me the uh, Excel sections of uh, MRI 109, including the T1, T2, and T1 post contrast weighted images. There is a large uh, soft tissue in density mass region C. Uh, which is arising uh, from the uh, left side of the nasopharynx involving the fossa of the rosal middle and uh, it is extending into the parapharyngeal and the retropharyngeal uh, space. Laterally, the uh, region is extending up, up to the uh, carotid space. It is causing uh, some narrowing of the airway. The region is hypo intense on the T1, hyper on T2 and show heterogeneous post contrast enhancement. It is uh, causing blockage of the eustachian tube and it, it associated with the mastoiditis on the right side. Uh, on the coronal images you scroll, there are multiple uh, lymph adenopathy seen at the uh, multiple cervical levels. The left-sided mastoid air cells are well aerated. Okay. The region is also inseparable from the pterygoid uh, muscles and there is some associated stranding is also seen in the uh, surrounding areas. Okay. So to summarize, what is the diagnosis? Uh, the most likely, uh, the, there are two possibilities. Uh, it can be uh, the Olafi infective etiology, which is uh, causing the abscess formation and the uh, eustachian tube blockage, armistiditis. And other possibility, it can be a uh, malignant lesion like this muscle carcinoma, which is causing uh, obstruction of the eustachian tube and leads to the mastoiditis. Yeah. So the patient was a case of diabetes and presented with right ear discharge. So. Now, most, uh, if you have the according, to the, according to the enhancement pattern, it is most likely the uh, infectious process. Yes. So, uh, you explained it nicely and you summed up it uh, really nice because there was some limitation uh, of uh, due to multiplicity of the images and the time is short. So, I think you did a wonderful job. Uh, the, the reason I, uh, I put this case uh, as, uh, as a first case of my session, uh, there are many multi multiple reasons for that. The first of all is uh, that whenever you are doing head and neck, we know that nasopharyngeal carcinoma, angiofibromas, and even the skull-based tumors, cordomas, and metastasis, they are uh, commonly uh, common pathologies which we encounter in um, different uh, days during rep reporting. So it's just uh, the first point is that uh, um, we need to look at the pattern uh, uh, of the pathology on especially first of all, let me go back to P1 weighted images. Please stay with me and bear too many images. The empty sites uh, in between were actually 
just to show that there is uh, one sequence is ending and the next is starting. So uh, just let me go to first of all to T1 just to tell you that every single sequence is so important and this was a, that when you are scrolling you are looking at every part of the imaging. This is what radiologists are supposed to do. So in head and neck there are two important areas. You, your anatomy needs to be very strong and it's not the name of the spaces and, and that you, you should only know that this is parapharyngeal masticator, carotid and posterior cervical carotid space. But actually you should know the pattern of pathologies that how they extend from one space to other and how do we look at the extension and look at the sequences to uh, figure out what is happening. So if you look at this case, if we go to the this uh, air column, we can see there, this, look at this wall and then look at this area. So this one is more swollen, enlarged and bulbous. And then if you look at this fat, this is neat and clean. In between the vessels, it's like something homogeneously going. If you go to this side, it's all gone. Even till here, if you just look at the left side, this is fat and clean and now you compare with the pathological side patient is having sepsis everywhere and draining the pus can you see my arrow yes sir. okay so the this is swelling and it's going here and then there and then there so then what we have what extra things we have we are having bones here and the bones they have bone marrow and the marrow is fatty and it's bright on t1 and t2 so if you look at this area just look at this now, now when you will follow, you will see that this this was hyper intense on T1, and then it becomes hyper intense on T2, and then it was enhancing. So actually, patient has middle ear infection, or digestive media, and then that extends to because the diabetic and maybe you know immunity status I don't know, but maybe there is some reason because so much extensive in infection we don't see usually. So patient has an abscess here in the uh, on the right side of the right parapharyngeal area and the apical petrocytis, mastoiditis, as a complication of otitis media. And then discharging pus and even the ear was swollen in red and then it extends to the skull base and resulted in osteomyelitis of adjacent bone. So actually this is the pattern which radiologists need to pick even before this stage. The, this is more evident here, but even if this MR would have been done a little earlier, for example, three, four months before, the changes would have been there. And being radiologists, we need to look at minor details that, uh, and we need to uh, share those with the treating clinician so that they can treat these cases aggressively because they are looking at the outer ear, so they know so many patients have ear discharge, so many patients have otitis media and mastoiditis, but not all of them will end up having so much complication inside the brain and uh, skull base, and uh, so much, uh, and, and, and you know what, if, if this would have been neglected, this osteomyelitis is neglected, this will need some injectable high-dose antibiotics, and if we miss these findings and we just describe other areas, so the treatment modality, uh, if, if we cannot pick this, how uh, the clinicians would never be able to find what is happening on the deeper part of this uh, particular case. So we, uh, our responsibility is huge. Our job is huge. So now if you look at this, you just look at this area. So this one was eaten up, see? So actually, uh, um, now I will scroll the post contrast images and you will be able to see that even the meninges and dura along here, they, they are enhancing. Then there are, we know the vagus nerve, 9th, 10th, 11th nerve, they pass through this area. So all the nerves are involved. So that is why the patient is having hoarseness and dysphagia and the tongue movements are affected. So just, just uh, the extent of the infection was so uh, strange and so grievous and the patient was in such a bad And look at this abscess, this is high point here. Yeah. And then when the contrast is given, the margins, they all lit up with contrast and the internal area is totally in a cross. 
the osteomyelitic bone is just eaten up and it's gone and then meninges are infected and uh, intravenous spread is minimal here but it's just started up and now now just realize that what is the importance of spaces in head and neck that you are going to tell the clinician that from the parapharyngeal space it is going into the pre-spinal space it is going it is involving the retropharyngeal fascia it is involving the bone then it is extending into the skull base and foramina and the perineural and in uh, neural spread and then extending into the mastoid then this is extending into the masticator space we know the contents one then bone then pterygoids and the masseter the abscess is in the masseter it is involved in the parotid space so blah 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 so much and uh, so so uh, so, uh, so much to do and uh, to extend but the being radiologist and especially in head and neck we need to know that where we are i mean where we are looking at then we will be able to know that uh, for what we are looking so um, i would i would just request that, um, that when we are preparing in the exam we are just trying to copy paste the diagnosis and um, then uh, okay this is neuropharynx so neuropharyngeal carcinoma you actually did a great job but usually even when i was a cbs candidate we don't we are so much stressed with the exam that we don't look at the uh, details that's yes. fine as as far as exam part is concerned but our duty is to teach you that you have to become a very safe radiologist for the patients so from that perspective just take a uh, take home lesson today that whenever you are practicing you will just be yes. careful with the reporting in all areas right so this was the case i will just scroll so quick and then we will move to the our routine session now just this was the abscess Yes. And this is the osteomyelitis here. This one. And these are the all the nerves in the arachnoid and the meninges at the skull base. They are enhancing. So you can revise the Grady-Nygo syndrome, Peters epicytis, mastoiditis, middle ear infection, and its uh, uh, complication. Right. Yes. So this okay. one is similarly. You can also revise. is a pharyngeal carcinoma and what what is the stage we know that stage 1 is confined here stage 2 goes to the uh, nasopharynx and oral cavity then as as then it starts involving the bones and the skull base and then perineural spread then intracranial spread so t3 and t4 comes so basically uh, it's the it's just a same pattern because the tumor is also extending and involving other areas but the appearance is different right so okay. that's how you will deal with the imaging so nice job done and best of luck well defined uh, mass which has some areas of calcification with it involving the uh, axillary teeth uh, it is uh, also infiltrating the adjacent gum region uh, it is showing uh, it is showing bulge on the overlying skin so my first differential is uh, angioblastoma and uh, okay. this could also uh, the second one is uh, giant cell tumor okay yes appropriate differentials and nice description Uh, i think not nothing much to add but uh, there are some other images so the message is to review the cystic lesions of the jaw so that uh, you are clear basic 1122 points of differential yes a uh, single ct image showing a uh, well defined uh, uh, lytic lesion in the cystic lesion in the left ramus of mandible with the impacted tooth in it So my first French uh, now I think so will be dentigen cyst as I, I can see a pattern tool within the cyst. Okay. So what are other cystic lesions of the jaw and what are the basic differential points? Uh, the other uh, lesions are like uh, we can have a, a radicular cyst. So what is the main imaging feature of radicular cyst? Uh, radicular cyst. Uh, 
it is attached with the root of the tooth. Like it will give the floating tooth sign. And other cystic lesion, uh, we can have uh, uh, ABC, um, like an original bone cyst, myeloblastoma. And uh, what is the syndrome associated with cyst in the jaw? Um, cyst in the jaw, basal, and uh, even uh, cell carcinoma is this whole thing. And, uh, hello. DG, what are, what are other features of basal cell nivel syndrome? We can have calcifications, four calcifications, multiple basal cell carcinomas and multiple odontogenic characteristics. Okay, so basal cell nervous and goilings are the same? Means this is goilings and dome which include these three criteria. Okay, alright. Okay, thank you. So, you can have uh, similar or, uh, I mean, not exactly the similar, but some, some cases from the jaw cyst as a tox case, right? Uh, Madam, this is the CT axial slices at the region of the uh, base of the skull in the region of the neck. Uh, uh, it is showing that uh, uh, on post contrast, it is showing uh, hydrogen stain enhancing uh, soft tissue mass which is involving the lower alveolar arch with some calcifications in it, sir, ma'am, uh, and it is well rounded, um, abutting the uh, base of the tongue towards the lateral side. Uh, in my provisional diagnosis, also it is causing mass effect on the carotid space and uh, carotid space and the pharynx. Uh, in my, I would like to see its bone window, whether it is the extensile bone lesion, uh, that is uh, any chondroma. This is the bone. If you see the ramus here. Yes, ma'am. Again, it where it is, number one, where it is, number two, what it is. So, where it is, if you look at the, the, the chondrolateral. Yes. So, always look at the chondrolateral normal side and, uh, and just give yourself a message that, Okay, the lesion is from the mandible. Yes. So, it is bone lesion, ma'am. So, what is your diagnosis and any differentials? Yes, I'm chondrosarcoma versus hemangioma. Okay, and can it be any sarcomatous lesion? Yes, I'm chondrosarcoma. I said. Okay, any other? Uh, so, I will ask the age of the patient uh, according to the age. Uh, and if it is the pediatric age, so Ewing sarcoma and neuroblastoma meds, ma'am. Ewing sarcoma versus neuroblastoma meds. Okay, okay. Alright, so how would you proceed? If, so, this is. This is, uh, everyone is clear that this is a sarcomatous lesion with a huge soft tissue component which is enhancing as well, right? So, how would you proceed with this case further? Uh, as it is sarcomatous lesion, uh, I will not see it. Uh, I will uh, refer it to uh, multidisciplinary committee uh, uh, through which it is proceeded further. If, if and also, I will, in my department, I will do ultrasound, abdomen. Uh, and further uh, uh, do query of the patient uh, whether he is suffering from neuroblastoma anywhere in the body. Yes, uh, we even say versus neuroblastoma, ma'am. Uh, also, I would like to see this bone window also. So, whenever you see sarcomatous lesion in any part of the body, whether you are attempting MSK or any session, you will always do a bone scan to assess multiplicity of the lesions and chest CT to assess the metastasis, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So nice. Skull. This is the same spectrum, but it may not be the same patient. This is X-ray chest. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. This is X-ray spine. Yes. And this is CT chest. So I will stop on CT and then you will just 
give me the, the findings and diagnosis and what differential differential for the skull differential for the vertebral finding and differential for the lung findings Okay, I will start with the skull. Uh, this is the uh, uh, lateral uh, X-ray skull of uh, uh, mature skeleton, and I can appreciate that there are multiple uh, lytic lesions are identified that are uh, scattered and that are involving whole of the skull, and all, uh, also the inner as well as the outer table of the skull, and these show. Uh, uh, well defined the well edges and so uh, this case I would uh, keep my talk of, uh, of uh, um, LCH um, uh, Langerhans and histiocytosis multiple reason of ventricular granulomas okay for BD I would ask the uh, history so the, uh, as these are multiple lytic lesions so uh, in my differential I would keep meds multiple myeloma and okay, um, that's that's so, it. Yeah. So, uh, okay, this is just a round to hyperparathyroid, you know, can also result in pepper pot type. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah. never forget that. And always, when you uh, when you review some cases of severe mount osteopenia, uh, never forget this, even during practice at time we see giant uh, the, the brown tumors of hyperparathyroidism i have seen two cases in uh, adults and uh, with, with two or three areas but patient presented with one side so we actually kept thinking about uh, lytic lesion other everything else other than hyperparathyroidism uh, and brown tumors of hyperparathyroidism, but uh, luckily because of test, the patient was diagnosed having a parathyroid adenoma. So, so the take home lesson is we will never forget hyperparathyroidism in osteopenia and lytic lesions. So, uh, not for this case, but otherwise. So, now describe the chest x ray and just give me yes. the difference. <laughs> Okay, there are multiple cystic, uh, 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 multiple cysts uh, uh, are identified, scattered uh, uh, in the both lung fields, and these are also involving the uh, costophrenic angles. Maybe. The lung volume is preserved, and so as yes, this is a female patient, so my uh, uh, first will be a differential leiomyomatosis, and on second I will. Uh, um, as this is not a female, male patient and uh, of course she would not be scope, <laughs> smoking, I think. So, um, again, Langerhans and cystocytosis. This can be cystic fibrosis. Um, this is, this, um, so again, uh, as I described earlier, as I mentioned earlier, that always look at the pattern. If you look at the pattern, what, just, just, just go and review some images. Google normal chest x-ray, this is a 20 year old, 20 year old. The interstitial will be so smooth and neat. So just look at this all web on bilaterally. So it's actually interstitial thickening and nodularity. And the cystic area which you are thinking are cystic is actually air which is entrapped between this diseased interstitium. So you need, your concept need to be very crisp. That it's interstitial okay. disease or it's the uh, cystic area. So actually, this is reticular nodular interstitium, and it's from the spectrum which you have uh, spectrum of the as I initially said that spectrum of the same disease. So yes. laser cell histiocytosis it results in interstitial reticulation and nodularity. And if you look at the CT scan, you will. We, you will observe nodules and then these nodules can cavitate as well. Costophrenic areas are spared. So the take home lesson for this is that uh, LCH can involve the head and neck bones and as we see the vertebra plana and lungs. So whatever disease involves the different systems, when you are studying one system, you should correlate the, you should go back to other system to see what does this disease do with lungs, what does it do with heart, what does it do with spine, so that your entire spectrum of the disease is covered as a one part, right? 
So this is nagging cancer, histiocytosis with interstitial pattern in the lungs, with nodularity and reticulations, and sparing of the postural phrenic areas. Another lesson, that's how you should actually actually learn that the the interstitial pattern with preserved volume. What is the diagnosis? Spot diagnosis? Orbital uh, pseudo tumor or orbital pseudo tumor or uh, thyroid thyroid of thyroid 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 of Okay, so, so what is the difference differentiation feature? In her right uh, belly of, uh, of the muscles of, uh, are involved mostly uh, with, with the sparing of tendon in orbital pseudotumor uh, tendon and uh, belly both uh, can be involved and it, it, it was uh, mostly asymmetrical. Okay, yes. Yes, I, uh, correct diagnosis. So, uh, uh, just read the differentiating features and uh, 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 it's This is a CT X-ray new uh, vertical draft. And this is a presentation yes. of the left equality cells. And uh, yes. there is a significant patch training. And there is uh, an uh, intraorbital extra coronal lesion in the left orbit with uh, patch training and marginal enhancement. And significant preceptor uh, tissue thickening is also noted within this lesion. And there is a classification of bilateral spinoidal air cells and partial classification of the right equinoidal sciences. So, what is the diagnosis? Um, uh, uh, and spinoidal sinusitis uh, with the uh, absence formation or. And so can you see the absence? Within, within the left, left orbit. This one? one? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. So, sinusitis and abscess in the left orbit, correct diagnosis. And what is the complication? Okay, when the sinus thrombosis, it can cause uh, intracranial extension. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. The coronary sinus thrombosis is the complication. So, in head and neck, the sinus disease with uh, orbital extension is a very uh, non uh, complication and uh, with, with 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 it can result in loss of eye so we need to we need to we need to be careful when we are uh, reviewing the cases of sinusitis uh, to any subtle abnormality in this fat this flat, fat should be black like this if we see any strain changes here so we need to report that right It's first is T2, then early, uh, the, the, from the dynamic images, early post contrast and then delayed post contrast. So I can see uh, an autotema signal density lesion in the intracoronal lesion, intracoronal region, which is showing peripheral budding on the uh, early post contrast and on the delay, it's showing complete homogeneous enhancement. So um, this looks like an uh, hemangioma or cavernoma. Um, uh, Covernus hemangioma. Covernus hemangioma. Covernoma is a different. Uh, that has different. Has a whole so we just call it covernus hemangioma. Yes, true. And correct diagnosis. What do you think? What What is this lesion? This is an autotema signal density lesion in uh, which is uh, uh, hypo intense on T2 and it's uh, showing significant post contrast enhancement. It's completely encasing the uh, optic nerve. And um, I do not see any areas of uh, signal void. So, um, optic nerve glioma is my first differential, yeah, or orbital optic, optic nerve uh, meningioma, but I would have, uh, it would have given a track uh, uh, calcification. And um, so, these are two differentials in my mind. Yes, usually in meningiomas, we see uh, the optic nerve is a little better visualized. So, it's, it's, this can be glioma or uh, uh, and it's, 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 it's T1 very low. So, yes, uh, the detailed review of other images, but these are appropriate uh, differentials on the submitted film.